Hi guys, my name is Vlad and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to review my 2006 Škoda Octavia VRS, the Volkswagen Mark V GTI that USA never got. Enjoy! Okay guys, so uh, first thing, let me begin with the history of this car, like how it, I got it, how it uh, came in my ownership. So, uh, three months prior to purchasing this car, I had a BMW Z3, I did really like that car, but for some personal reasons I had to sell it. And after three months, like uh, I had a specific budget in my mind and I was starting looking back for BMWs, since I had five of them. Uh, I did never have a Volkswagen or Škoda. Uh, I was looking on our local marketplace. Unfortunately, I did not find any decent BMW up to my likings or in a good shape. And then I did remember about this car, since it, uh, it's my friend's car that he has owned for uh, three years. He has driven around 50,000 kilometers on it during these three years. Um, I did decide to take it for, uh, I did think, I still think, a good price. And uh, this car, of course, it did not uh, came perfect. Like um, I did uh, an engine rebuild, or like let's say small engine rebuild. Uh, after the first week of ownership, like I was uh, having a start from first to second gear. Then I put third gear, and uh, the light comes up at uh, low oil pressure. Low oil pressure came up. Like I did stop, and there was. Um, I did get out of the car and like underneath it, like for a few hundred meters, there was a very long oil stain. Like I'll put the pictures in the video, like I did open the hood and everything was in oil. So I did uh, tow my car to ABT. Here in Kishina we have an official uh, service, ABT. And like there works one of my friend and I did give it to him to fix the car. I'll also put the pictures. So what happened? The heat exchanger seal uh, blow up and all the oil and coolant did the leak down. We did uh, remove the oil pan, we did uh, remove the rods and we did change the rod bearings since like I was pushing the car for a few seconds but let's say without oil. Uh, the rod uh, bearings were not in very bad shape but since I did remove them we did change them to new anyways. As well we did change like uh, many parts like let's say new heat exchanger new oil housing uh, on the top of the engine like we did uh, I mean I did replace the valve cover gasket I did change the turbo actuator I uh, did change like the coil packs from an Audi R8 or a Lamborghini Gallardo the funny part is that these coil packs are actually cheaper than uh, the Volkswagen Golf GTI or like Škoda VRS uh, parts. Also after that like uh, whatever changes I did do like I did change the crank sensor uh, crank speed sensor because like my car did uh, start to develop an issue like I was uh, driving it I was driving it and like it began to stall so like I had no idea what's going on and in one night uh, after I did the stall, it was not cranking up at all. So this way, like I did uh, change that as well. I did change the um, um, tank breather uh, valve as well. Like I'll put uh, pictures for everything. Like uh, oil, I'm putting in it right now. Um, Liquid Moly 540, 5W40. But uh, the day after we do this video, I'm going to change it again. Since like this is... Uh, a car that uh, I like to push sometimes. Well, of course, during the night outside the city to not put anyone in, in uh, danger. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to do some uh, well change and one other thing. Okay, guys, so now I'm filming the car. I'll tell you the details about this specific car, which is like the 2006 model. This is the Škoda Octavia uh, in the body of A5 or Mark II, you can tell it. And since my car, it's uh, pre-facelift, like it's, it on, it's on the base of the Volkswagen Mark V GTI. The facelift, the facelift car 
it's on the base of the Volkswagen 6 in GTI. I'll put picture uh, in the video so you can see how does the facelift look like. And uh, let's talk about the technical uh, part of this car. So it does have a 2 liter TFSI engine, which is found in many Volkswagen cars, such as like the same uh, Volkswagen Golf 5 GTI, Volkswagen EOS, Volkswagen Passat, Audi A3, A4, uh, Seat Cupra, Skoda Superb, uh, Tiguan, Volkswagen Tiguan, and some more. Like right now, I will uh, pop the hood so I can uh, show you the engine. Like this is the interior. I'll be here back in a second. So look, here we pull this. The hood release, like I have to pull it with my finger. I'm oh, sorry. Opa. Okay, so look, this is the 2 liter TFSI engine, which you can see does have the Skoda logo, even it is a Volkswagen engine. So also, like here is the intake, it goes up like this, here is the air filter, and there it goes back uh, between the engine and the cabin. There is the turbo, like uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show it it's uh, hidden over there so look, also you can see here the red coil bags from the audi r8 okay so you'll see here is the new heat exchanger here is a new engine mount and uh, let me tell you about the modifications of this car some time ago to the first owner that did modify it it had a k04 turbo it was making around 360 horsepower uh, it had the uh, cold air intake big intercooler forged rods unfortunately the setup was uh, sold to another car and it was reverted back to stock but the engine internals did remain like the forged rods are still inside i'll be able to show you a picture and uh, the oil pump it's from an 1.8 t engine like since it's believed that it's uh, better more reliable more pressure and also the car at the moment it does have a stage one tune which should be at around uh, 250 horsepower in stock this engine does make 200 horsepower and uh, right now should be around 250 but we still have like a small issue like with boost leak the the turbo is pushing 1.2 bar, but unfortunately the engine does arrive 0.7 in the peak, which means that the car is running right now at around 220 horsepower. Like we did uh, uh, log the car and the logs did show that it's running on around 220 horsepower. The fuel injectors I did remove, I did clean them. I did clean the intake. So like the intake from the head part it was all in uh, black, uh, in carbon buildup, that was cleaned. And uh, tomorrow, like we will uh, clean inside the uh, engine, like inside the burning chamber, inside the ignition chamber, we will uh, clean the carbon buildup as well. This should uh, help with the oil consumption. Like unfortunately, these engines do have like oil consumption. And on my car, it's around one liter at uh, 1250 kilometers on average here you'll be able to see the radiators so like on this platform like all three radiators are together i mean the first one this one it's the ac the free one uh, radiator the one in between it's the intercooler and the last one the big one is for the coolant uh, the headlights they have been modified like unfortunately they need a refurbish because look, they have been painted black from inside and uh, here we do have some uh, LED strips like uh, I will show later in the video how do they work like this is the bumper from a uh, Skoda Octavia VRS like there does get a lot of dirt it's recommended to clean it from time to time okay now guys I want to show you the interior of this car okay so this is the door car it's a lever the interesting part are the seats because like they are uh, like free materials like uh, here are leather here is alcantara and here is textile okay let me get inside the car 
here we have uh, shiny pedals like this is the um, Skoda Octavia VRS steering wheel of course it is a six-speed manual the climate control has been changed from a facelift car the infotainment system it's uh, RNS 310 or RNS 350 I'm sorry I don't know right what is the name also the car does have black headliner like one of the main thing why I did purchase this car it's because it had black headliner and I did really want a car with a black headliner now let me go back to the rear seats okay so here you'll be able to see like the beautiful part is that the VRS logo it's in the Alcantara part on the top of the seats like on all four seats this is very nice okay and we have a really big boot since this is like a shooting brake so look very very big boot a lot of space you can put a lot of luggage over here like here we have hidden compartments like this you can do it like this is how you close it and like it shows press you just do it like this and it opens up of uh, rear seats do recline I'll show you how it's very easy so like here is the lever and it's open and after that you have to pull the belt in order to close it back that's how you do it okay now I'll talk about the brakes and suspension it is the exact same brakes, suspension, steering track, everything. It's the same as in the Golf Mark V GTI. It uh, stops very good. I like it. I don't see right now a reason to go for bigger brakes. They do satisfy me. Also, tires were running like Debica Ultra High Performance in the front. 23540 R18. And in the rear, it's like Hankook Ventus S Evo 3, uh, 245, 40, R18. These uh, rims, I don't know what brand they are, unfortunately, very pretty heavy. I'd like to replace them uh, sometime. Also, like the windshield, it's like a ceramic windshield. It does glow in uh, purple under the sun. It uh, believed to help with the uh, heat inside the interior. I'm not so sure about that, but it looks nice. I like it. Okay, so now we are driving the Škoda Octavia DRS and uh, we are right now outside the city like we are going to return back in the city uh, I will speak about fuel consumption so this car in the city uh, gets around 11 liters for 100 kilometers uh, outside the city it can go as low as uh, 6 liters for 100 kilometers if you are not uh, pushing too hard on the right foot but uh, on average my uh, fuel consumption is like 10.9 liters in uh, combined so let's talk about the performance of this car so uh, on the internet it shows that stock it must do 7 seconds from 0 to 100 unfortunately I was not able to do these numbers like I had the uh, drag it I did try many times my best valid 0 to 100 was 8.2 seconds because first and uh, second gear I had the uh, wheel spin even if these are 235 tires I had the uh, wheel spin I'm sure that with better tires I'll be able to get a result closer to stock maybe better uh, the top speed of this car is like 250 uh, best I did was like 210 or 220 in Germany of course so look here is the six speed model when uh, you don't shift the car will uh, have some burbles pops and bangs from the 
exhaust like let's say you are in four and you downshift in third like while downshifting you leave it you give it a little bit of gas and when you drop the clutch like it will uh, have like a second or two of uh, purpose which is uh, nice about the exhaust this car doesn't have any modifications except the rear muffler it's deleted so like it's louder than a stock car but uh, it's not hurting your ears driving this every day also right now like we're outside city like uh, we're pushing it in four slowly the power band on this car uh, comes around 3.5 thousand rpm like uh, from 2000 like it feels the torque of a car it starts going but real accelerating happens after 3, 3.5 thousand rpms which in city I don't uh, usually go over 3000 since that's for us more than enough like we are now in 6th gear comfortably cruising at 2000 rpm we have around 85 km per hour at uh, 210 it has 4500 rpms so like Sixth gear could be longer, but like it's uh, fine for me right now. The steering on this car, like this is my first front wheel drive car, so I cannot really compare it to other front wheel drive cars. Like it's fine, I like it, but my personal preference it's uh, rear wheel drive. The steering rack on this car is electric, so you might not get all of the feel on the steering wheel, but uh, it's pretty informative for me. Maybe in the video was uh, audible the pops and bangs, but I'm not sure about that. It now have a little bit of purples again. Uh, let's speak about uh, how is this car for a daily driver. Uh, personally, I would prefer it to be automatic or DSG, uh, simply because in our city it's a lot of traffic and uh, mostly of my driving it's through traffic, and this would be easier for me. Uh, but like I drive. Uh, whatever gearbox it has, I do not uh, complain. The boot is pretty big, uh, rear space for a rear passenger is uh, also decent, so uh, I'm not sure like if this would work as a recommendation for a daily driver, unless you find a really good one in good shape for reasonably low price, then yes. But of course, like this car, in order for you to buy it, you must test drive it, you must like it. Like I cannot tell uh, anyone to buy it or not. My preferences for a car, it's still rear wheel drive. 